and hello YouTube, this is GS Man, I'm Smart, and I'm today with another brand new video for Gaming with GS, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Ascended Trinkets, the new maps that we've gotten, some of the new currencies, and just give you a, short, a sort of a, a rundown of how to farm for some of these currencies very efficiently. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I've seen a lot of people ask questions in map chat, ask me questions. I see some questions in the comments even asking, what's so special about these new maps? What's the whole deal with people farming winter berries, with people farming petrified wood? Uh, I've seen some people say that the new maps are boring and they're not really fun because there's no goal. But in reality, there is a huge goal behind these new maps, especially if you don't have your ascended gear yet. And especially even more so if you have different characters and you want to start making gear, ascended gear for those characters now we have an easier way to get ascended gear through pvp and getting the ascended uh shards and there's also an easier way now to get ascended trinkets before you had to have had a ton of laurels or you had to have had a ton of gold or done guild missions or have tons of ectoplasm you had to have had all those currencies which are kind of difficult to get uh, to buy the Ascended Trinkets. But with these new maps and these new currencies, Petrified Wood, Blood Rubies, and what's the other one, what's the other one called? The Fresh Winter Berries, there we go. Fresh Winter Berries. You can now obtain these new Ascended Trinkets and for a much cheaper price, and also have the ability to choose between any stat type in the game. Now, yes, there is a way to make gold off of petrified wood, blood rubies, and fresh winter berries, and there is a there is a portion of the population farming these items to make gold. We do have a gold guide on uh, this specific method of basically salvaging and consuming fresh winter berries, petrified wood, and blood rubies to get unbound magic, and then converting that unbound magic to gold through buying packets and bundles, opening those, getting the loot, and then selling. If you want a more specific explanation, if you want to see that gold guide video, I will leave a card on screen right now, and you can click that and you can learn how that works. There's also a link in the description below. Uh, also, I want to direct you to our specific map guides. Even though in this video, I'm going to go over how to farm for some of these materials and explain to you uh, what's so cool about these materials and what you can uh, get more specifically in the uh, Ascended Trinkets section. I also want to direct you to our Bloodstone Fen map guide, our Bitter Frost Frontier map guide, and our Ember Bay map guide, which goes a bit more in depth of how these maps work, uh, what you can get, and uh, the, how the events function and whatnot. So if you want more specific guides on these three new maps and these three new currencies, click the links in the description. I do have the map guides for each of these maps linked in the description, so you can check those out if you want to do so. But the main reason uh, why you want to farm for these uh, items, basically, the main reason why you want to farm for these currencies, basically, is to get these Ascended Trinkets. Now, for me, I have a full set of Ascended gear on my Elemental already. Now, I want to try to gear up my Guardian. I'm trying to get Commander stat gear on my Guardian. And one of the ways I'm getting my Ascended Trinkets is through Ember Bay, Bloodstone Fen, and Ember Frost Frontier. Because the trinkets that you buy from these vendors, each map has a currency. Fresh Winter Berries, uh, Blood Rubies, and Petrified Wood. And each vendor in those areas, you can use those specific currencies to buy trinkets with any stat types. If you want to make a Commander Gear Guardian, you can get those trinkets through those currencies. If you want to make a Sinister, Viper Gear, Minstrel Gear, any of the four stat types and any other stat type that you can't get anywhere else through laurels because previously you could have bought any stat type through laurels but now you can only get the central core interior stat types through laurels all the new stat type all the stat types that have four attributes you cannot get through laurels some of them you can only get through raids and some of them you can only get through crafting, which means you have to find the recipe unless you want to buy it for the huge price value on the trading post. So what's the next best and most efficient way to do it? It's to go and use these new currencies to then buy the trinkets from the vendors. Obviously, you can buy the uh, new stat type gear from, from the PvP vendor. Now with the ascended uh, shards that you get from 
PvP, you can now buy the gear also in a much easier way. But to get trinkets, you need uh, the specific currencies from the different maps. So uh, if you're doing Bloodstone Fen, your main focus is Blood Rubies. Now the cool thing about Bloodstone Fen, even though there are not a lot of Blood Rubies you can get, I feel like you can get a lot more fresh winter berries and a lot more petrified wood from Ember Bay and from Bitter Frost Frontier. While Bloodstone Fen tends to only have a few places you can get Blood Rubies, a lot of the Bloodstone Crystals in the area also don't really drop as many blood rubies as you'd expect them to but with that being said the prices for the trinkets are also a lot cheaper if you want to get the amulet for example it only costs 125 blood rubies if you want to get the back piece it costs 200 and if you want to get the ring it only costs 100 blood rubies but how can you get a lot of these blood rubies well basically there are several ways of getting them well, you can get one you can get 10 blood rubies from completing the bloodstone sightings current event achievement and all you have to do is see the six different creatures the six different bloodstone creatures and once you've seen them you get 10 blood rubies we do have a guide on that current event so if you want to see that current event i will leave a card on screen right now you can check that current event guide out and you'll be able to get 10 blood rubies the other way is from completing the dailies we now have dailies in each of the new maps and there tends to be four dailies for each of the new maps if you do all four dailies you get four blood rubies so that's a great way to every day go to these new maps get your blood rubies for the day and then come back the next day and continue to do them so in bloodstone fen you also have through the dailies and you also have through some of the major events now you can get one ruby from escorting double blade this is an event that happens in bloodstone fen and if you escort double blade you get one blood ruby upon the event completing you can also get three rubies for defeating the Justicar hablion now this is usually always a daily in bloodstone fen and it's in that big circular area on the map that you're seeing right now uh, this event tends to spawn every 30 minutes but if you complete that event it's very easy a lot of people always do it because it's a daily and you get blood rubies you get three extra blood rubies plus the blood ruby you get from the daily that's four blood rubies so those are the ones that those are the smaller events that give you blood rubies however there's also some major events that give you blood rubies such as killing the jade constructs uh in the big huge area where there's a big hole in the ground where there's like a cylinder circular area you can jump down uh, if you go to that area of the map you tend to fight a bunch of jade constructs and in the last phase of that chain event you're fighting two jade constructs when you've killed both jade constructs in that last phase you can get another other two blood rubies so you don't need to stay there for the entire event for the entire chain of events you can come to the event in the last five minutes when everyone's killing the pair of jade constructs and you can get an extra two rubies from that then also at the very bottom level of bloodstone fen after you kill the two jade construct champions at the very bottom there's a legendary unbound guardian and you can get four blood rubies from that legendary unbound guardian uh, additionally, if you want to get some extra blood rubies, you can uh, mine some of the bloodstone crystals around the area and you'll get bloodstone dust, but also you have a rare chance of getting blood rubies, but the chances of getting blood rubies are very low. I feel like uh, Ember Bay and obviously Bitter Frost Frontier, you always get fresh winter berries, but Ember Bay, you tend to get a bit more petrified wood than you do here and getting blood rubies from bloodstone crystals. But I guess that's also why the costs are cheaper for the Ascended Trinkets. So those are all the events and all the ways you can get Blood Rubies. Uh, what I would do is basically make a list of these things, write it down in your notepad or on a piece of paper. You know, do the do the Legendary Unbound Guardian, do the Jade uh, Constructs, uh, then do Hablion, do all the dailies. And I tend to not like doing the Escort event because it only gives you one Blood Ruby anyway. I tend to just do the Legendary, the Jade Constructs, Hablion, and the four dailies. That's what I tend to do most of the time. And then you can also glide around and, and find some Bloodstone Crystals and you can mine those as well. So that's basically everything for Bloodstone, Bloodstone Fen. That's how you farm for Blood Rubies the most efficient way. Now when you go to Ember Bay, you actually have Petrified Wood. And I feel like this is one of the best ways, uh, apart from Fresh Winterberry farming, because you get a ton of Fresh Winterberries. But Petrified Wood is also a great way to get them very quickly, because there are a lot of events that give Petrified Wood. There's a lot of Petrified Stumps across the map. 
and there's many different ways you can get these as well. So first of all, you can get Petrified Wood from the hearts. It's sad that they didn't add hearts in Bloodstone Fang because it would have been another way to get Blood Rubies, which I felt like was a missed opportunity, but I guess they didn't think about that. They, they thought of bringing hearts back during Ember Bay, which is just fine, I guess. Like I said, the prices are adjusted. But if you complete all the hearts every day, you can get a bundle of Petrified Wood. And each of these bundles of Petrified Wood gives you three extra Petrified Wood. So if you complete all the hearts, you can get a total of 15 Petrified Wood from completing all the hearts in the area. On top of that, you can also walk around the entire Ember Bay map and look for Petrified Stumps. Most of these tend to give you uh, petrified wood. They have a, a, a pretty pretty average dropper. They're not very difficult to get. They're also not you know super easy. They have a pretty average dropper. Sometimes you'll get three petrified wood in all three chops. Sometimes you'll get zero. Sometimes you'll get two. Sometimes you'll get one. It's very random, but I think it's an average drop rate. So you can also get them from farming through harvesting, chopping down trees. Another way you can get them, and I don't think this is a very good way of getting them, mainly because you have to use uh, some of your petrified wood, is through buying a script contract from the uh, script vendor and then you can use that script contract to open up script stashes and you have a chance of getting uh, petrified wood it costs one petrified wood to buy the script contract and then it also uh, you have a chance of getting between one to three from the script stashes however this is a risky method i haven't tried it because i don't really want to try that i don't i feel like uh, I may not get the results I like, but if, if you've tried that method through script, script contract and opening script stashes and you end up getting more petrified wood than you would have used in buying the contracts, please let us know in the comment section below because I think it'll help everyone out and uh, we're all here to learn. So uh, if you've experienced good luck and if you've experienced good results, uh, share the experience with us. So that's another way you can do it. And the other way you can do it is obviously through dailies. Again, there are usually always four or th I think there's three dailies. There's four or three dailies. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. I'm pre-recording the audio before the footage here, so apologies. But there are dailies in Ember Bay that you can also complete. And usually they involve killing one of the champions. And you'll always pay attention to map chat. And any of these maps you go to, pay attention to map chat because people will tell you when stuff is up. People will say, oh, Hablion is up. Oh, Unbound Guardian is up. Oh, Worm is up. Kark is up. Up. Jade Contract is up. People will always tell you. And if you don't know, you can always ask in Map Chat and people will always tell you. So you have daily achievements in Ember Bay, which include completing a specific heart or, or you know, either or. There's two choices for hearts. You can complete any heart, basically, in the selection. And you get a Petrified Wood for that. You can also get Petrified Wood from gathering the Unbound Magic, which are those little circular, uh, circular things that float in the air. You can also do that in... Um, in Bloodstone Fen, where you collect the little spheres, the floating orbs, and you collect those, and you also get a daily for that. And I think the other way is by killing a specific champion. Just look at your dailies, complete those dailies, and you'll get even more Petrified Wood. And the last way of getting more Petrified Wood is through the very specific events. Now, uh, here's what I'm telling. Here's what I'm saying that, that Ember Bay has a lot of different ways to get uh, and petrified wood because there are a lot of events that give petrified wood. So to get petrified wood from different events, you can do the jumping puzzle. The jumping puzzle in the I think it's the northwest corner of the map. Uh, you can do that jumping puzzle, and you do get. Uh, petrified wood after completing the joint puzzle at the very end you get five petrified wood so you could do that but some people don't like doing the joint puzzle so you can very much easily skip that you can also do the coalescence events there are three coalescence events happening on ember bay and they're in three different areas i'm circling them on the map right now in those three different areas a, a coalescence event will spawn and if you do all three of them, you get two petrified wood from each. So if you complete all of them, you get six petrified wood. It's a very easy event, doesn't take very long. You can also defeat the Sloth Queen, which basically is an escort. We actually did a Traveler's Tale on that, so pretty cool. Um, but if you escort the Sloth Feeder, you don't need to complete that event. But as long as you're there for the kill of the Sloth Queen, once again, if you watch Map Chat, people will tell you, but it's in the Performance Fields area. If you go there and kill the Sloth Queen, you get another three extra petrified wood. You can also defeat the Molten Dominator, and this is the one that happens south side of the map in the volcano. Uh, the, the, the boss will spawn on the bottom of the map, and you also get three Petrified Wood for that, for killing that uh, boss. You also get another uh, three from killing Vermungus, and this is the Worm boss. This is the one that spawns on the north side of the map. Uh, if you go there, you can also complete the heart by defeating the boss there. And if you basically uh, defeat the boss, you complete the heart, 
but if you defeat the boss, you get three extra petrified wood. And lastly, if you complete the escorting Skrilla event, you get another three petrified wood from the big chest that spawns after the Skrilla event completes. The only downside with the Skrilla event escorting, which happens in the Skrit area, is that you need to donate funds. A lot of times people don't want to donate funds and people will just wait for other people to do it. So this event happens rarely, but always check it. If it is happening, be sure to get that chest because it's a free extra petrified wood. It's a very easy event. You get extra loot also. That's basically all the ways you get petrified wood through Ember Bay. Lastly, let's go over fresh winter berries. And fresh winter berries, you can get a ton of these, but in consequence, it also costs a ton to buy the Ascended Trinkets. For the earring, it costs 300 winter berries. For the band, which is the ring, it costs 200 winter berries. Compared to the much more discounted prices in Ember Bay and Bloodstone Fen, these cost a lot more, but rightfully so because you can get a ton of winter berries in one day very easily, mainly from the winter berry bushes that spawn all over the map. I've seen a lot of winter berries spawn near the forest, the giant forest area, the north side of the map, uh, the northeast, the northwest, and the north side of the map. A lot of winter berry bushes spawn there, and you can get a ton of winter berries from that. And uh, that's a great way of farming them. Uh, you can also obviously complete the dailies, just as we completed the dailies in the last two maps. Uh, there is one daily about the Thaw Elixir if you craft the Thaw Elixir. Once again, I wouldn't really recommend doing that because the Thaw Elixir requires winter berries. And with the Thaw Elixir, you can go into the bitter cold and you can open some chests and you might get a chance of getting winter berries. Once again, that's based on chance. Uh, with these things that are, you know, heavily gated by daily and by limits, I don't like to go for chances, so, uh, but you can craft a Thaw Elixir, that is a daily, you do get a winter berry, and then with the winter berries, you craft a Thaw Elixir, you can go into the bitter cold, and in the bitter cold, you can open chests, and they, they have a chance of giving you winter berries, but if you don't want to do that, you can skip that daily, do the other dailies, and you'll get more winter berries through the dailies, you'll get winter berries through the winter bushes that spawn around the map, like I already said, and then the last way of getting uh, winter berries, uh, you can get some from icebound chests. Uh, if you open icebound chests, you do have a chance of getting winter berries. Uh, the regular icebound chests give you between one to two winter berries. You have to obviously have uh, the torch in your hand to defreeze them unless someone else has defrozen them already, then you can open them. You get between one and two. The ones in the bitter cold, you get between zero and three. So uh, there is a chance of getting nothing at all, which is why I don't want to you know, craft a thaw elixir. But if you open icebound, icebound chests, you can get... Uh, fresh winter berries that way too, and there's a lot of ice bunches throughout the entire map, uh, so that's a great way of doing it. And the last way, obviously, is through completing the hearts. If you complete the hearts, you can once again buy uh, winter berries with karma, just as you did in the other uh, map in Ember Bay. You can buy petrified with karma, and in here you can also in Bitter Frost Frontier you can also buy the winter berries with karma as well. So those are the ways you can farm for winter berries. I'd say winter berries is the best way to go because there's tons of chests around the area. There's tons of winter berry bushes around the area. And there's a lot of ways to get fresh winter berries. Then I would say try to go for Ember Bay. Ember Bay also has lots of ways to get petrified wood. And lastly, in a resort, I would go for uh, the Blood Rubies in Bloodstone Fen. Uh, the best way to do this is just to do all three maps every day. Do dailies in all the maps. And eventually, you'll gather... Uh, all three currencies passively you'll get them and you'll have enough to buy several trinkets from several different maps That way you're not just focusing on one map and, fo fo and focusing on buying the trinkets through one map but, but basically buying it through all three maps which makes it faster to get your ascended trinkets And like I said these ascended trinkets allow you to select any stat in the game It's not just assassins berserkers uh, Knights and all the core ones, but any stat that they've added in the entire game you can pick Aside from that, though, you also need unbound magic. So you need lots of unbound magic. I think some of these cost 3,000, 4,000 unbound magic. So along with the currency from the map, you also need tons of unbound magic. And the way you get that is very easy. Just collect the orbs. Every time you see a, a, a blue orb, collect it through gliding or jump to it to get the orb. That gives you unbound magic. Completing events gives you unbound magic. Killing things in the new areas gives you unbound magic. Uh, harvesting things, mining... Uh, chopping down trees. There are even very specific mining picks and very specific logging axes and harvesting sickles that whenever you harvest something, you get extra unbound magic. So even if you're in Quarteria harvesting, you can still get unbound magic. And I think those are buyable from several vendors. I go to Ember Bay though, the Asuran assistant, and I tend to buy the 
uh, unbound uh, the unbound tools there. So there are a lot of different ways to get unbound magic, and it's very easy to get that. You just have to make sure you have a lot of it, and you have to make sure you have those currencies from each different map, so you can then buy your ascended trinkets. So that's basically all I wanted to go over today. I just wanted to give you uh, a little guide on each of the different maps, how to farm for those very specific currencies, and how you can get your ascended trinkets a lot easier now, maybe, if you thought it was harder before, if you didn't have enough laurels, or if you didn't, if, or if you wanted to go for a stat type that wasn't available with those that are only available in raids, now is a much easier way to get them with these new maps, and, uh, you know, be aware that we will be getting more new maps and we'll probably get more new currencies. So they'll probably implement a very similar method. You can probably get you know other different kinds of ascended trinkets through other maps that are going to create later in the future. And it'll probably work the exact same way. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Um, and if you did, go ahead and leave a like. would really appreciate it. If you have any other tips for anybody else, any suggestions, any feedback, any other ways of you know getting these currencies very easy, leave them in the comments section below. I'll be down there answering any questions you have, talking to you guys as usual. You know We're all here to learn and to grow. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them down below. If you're looking for more answers, check the comments section. There are a lot of smart people on our channel here. So uh, make sure you look through this comment section. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. We have plenty of other games content videos on the channel lots of other guild wars 2 guides in the channel we have gold guides gaming guides general guides we have collection guides all kinds of guild wars 2 guides on the channel so if you're interested please go ahead and subscribe i also want to inform you that i will be uh out of town for the next three days friday saturday and part of sunday so i apologize i will not be making a video on those three days uh, so hopefully you're okay with the three, four videos that we had this week. It is me and Ariana, my girlfriend's fifth anniversary of being together. So we'll be going out for the weekend. So I will be back on Sunday. If I'm not back too late on Sunday, I'll make a video. But most likely, I'm probably going to make a video on Monday again. But hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you found it useful. And if you want to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can do so as well. Anything as low as a dollar is very helpful and very much appreciated. Click the card on the top right-hand corner of the screen. It'll bring you to the page. And if you want to check out my vlogging channel, the tutorials channel, the advice channel, or the music channel, links are in the description as well as on the end screen. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching as always. Hopefully you guys are having a good evening and a good weekend. And this is GSM. I'm smart. And I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.